To start, I'm going to take off my wheel with a 19 millimeter socket, take off all five of your lug nuts. And take off your wheel. So to take the ball joint pinch bolt out, uh, I, I recommend using a socket, an 18 millimeter socket on the nut side and just holding the Torx bit. Torx bits are usually weaker than the sockets, so they're more likely to break, which is why I'm doing it this way. By the way, this is a T55. So take the nut off, pull the bolt out. If this is seized and rusted in there, um, just apply some heat, twist it back and forth, and uh, spray it with rust penetrant. It should come right out. Now I'm going to take a large pry bar and try to pry the ball joint down and out of the knuckle. It looks like it's working. A lot of times these will get seized in here as well. So again, spray it with rust penetrant. You can use a hammer and hammer down on the control arm if needed. Maybe that's what I'll have to do at this point, but it did break free, so that's good. So I'm going to put the, push this back in at this point and then try to pull down fast. And maybe that'll pop it out. There we go. It's coming out now. There it is. 18 millimeter socket. Let's remove this front bolt. Pull that out. There we go. Control arm drops a little bit. That's perfect. Now all we have to do is remove these two rear bolts. And they're 18 millimeters on the bottom, but you have to hold the nuts that are on the top. 18 millimeter socket on the bottom and 21 millimeter wrench on the top. You got to hold that nut in place, remove the bolt. Take the nut off. Take the nut off and now we just have to do the same to this rear one. For this one, you can obviously reach the bolt from underneath, but the wrench has to come up above this cross member here. Um, you might be able to get it through the front, but it'll be a little difficult. So through the back is probably the easiest. There we go. Take the bolt out, pull the nut off. And now we can remove the control arm. Now you can pull the control arm out. I like to give it a couple twists and you have to just break this bracket free from where it is. Get a pry bar in there. Try to get it out of its position. The sway bar and the bushing also goes through those bolt holes. So you have to unlodge that at the same time. There it is. Here's your front lower control arm. To get the sway bar bushing bracket up higher, I'm gonna take off this top sway bar link nut. That way I can pull the sway bar up. It's a 15 millimeter socket for the nut. Let's see if it'll come off. If not, we'll use a five millimeter Allen in the middle and just unscrew the stud. Okay, looks like we'll have to go that route. So since that didn't work, I'm gonna take a 15 millimeter wrench, put it on the nut and then a five millimeter Allen Put it in the middle of that stud and you actually have to tighten the stud to push it through. There it goes. Take the nut off. As you can see, I sprayed it with some rust penetrant, which definitely helped. Now you can pull the sway bar link out and the sway bar can come up and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now with the sway bar link disconnected, you can see how much more room we can make here. And you can slide this control arm with the bracket in. Don't be afraid to use a rubber mallet if you need to persuade it to go in. Um, twist it down. Be careful. The ball joint is hitting up against the rotor. So you have to kind of bring it down, but the bushing in the back wants to slide out. So when you do this, just watch out. Okay. Make sure the backing plate doesn't cut this boot. Let's grab a rubber mallet. Okay. 
Okay, bring this over, try to line up the, the, the front bolt. Again, pay attention to your backing plate. When you hit the ball joint end with the rubber mallet, don't hit underneath and don't hit on the boot. Okay, so the front bolt is in. It's not lined up, but it's in, or the bushing, I should say. Now hammer this in. Okay, so to line up the top hole on that, I'm going to pull the knuckle to the side. Now the control arm wants to go up, just like that, and that makes it so this bushing kind of evens out. Now you can push this through. Not yet. There we go. That's one. Let's get the other one. Line up the rear. Perfect. Now let's get the nuts started on and it actually when you do this, you want to pay attention, make sure that it actually goes through the sway bar bushing bracket as well, which it did on both bolts, so that's perfect. I'm gonna get this rear nut started onto the bolt. Okay, that's on. Let's get the front one started. This one, I have to reach through the front. Get the wrench on the nut side, snug up the bolt side. Okay, we'll come back and torque these in a little bit. Let's tighten up the front one as well. All right, again, we'll come back and torque these after all of them are in. Let's put the front bolt in. Let's line up the front hole with the um, subframe, push the control arm into place, slide the bolt through, make sure it threads on. Let's bottom this out and then we'll come back and torque this one as well. Perfect. So the control arm, the ball joint isn't in yet and it's sitting pretty much straight basically what it would be like at ride height. So with the vehicle on the ground, the wheel on, the suspension load and everything. And that's how you wanna torque the uh, bushings here. Because if you torque them with the control arm down and then you put it up, it's actually always in a bind, in a twist, and it'll prematurely wear. So now with the control arm like this, let's torque this front bolt to 111 foot pounds and then an additional 90 degrees. So, Let's go 111 foot-pounds, that's right there, and then we'll go 90 degrees, which is a quarter of a turn. So I'm going to start, I start right here and go to right about here. There we go, that's 90 degrees right there. And these two rears get torqued to 85 foot-pounds and then an additional 90 degrees each. So let's start with 85 on both. That's, that's one. And now let's go 90 degrees. Okay, let's go an additional 90 degrees. That's 90 right there. Let's do the rear one. Let's pull the knuckle out, pry the control arm down, and then straighten out the ball joint to make sure that it can go in. I'm gonna put just a little bit of anti-seize on this ball joint stud here. That way it's less likely to get stuck in there in the future. Not that it was stuck this time, but you never know. Bring the knuckle in. Try to line up the knuckle with the ball joint right there. Give it a couple wiggles and the bolt or the stud should slide right through. Now you wanna make sure that the cutout on that stud lines up with the hole. That's how 
You can put the bolt in. If the bolt doesn't go through, then your ball joint is either too high up or too far down. This bolt slid right in, which is perfect. So let's get the nut on. Let's snug it up and then we'll torque it. Okay, let's hold the bolt and torque the nut to 61 foot-pounds. Right there. Now take your sway bar link, push the sway bar back down, line it up with the strut, slide it through the hole, and start on this nut up top. Let's snug up this nut. Okay, so for these, you wanna just make sure they're nice and tight. Do your best. There we go. Yep, that's tight. Let's put the wheel back on. Start on all of your lug nuts, snug them up, and torque them to 100 foot-pounds. <laughs> 